undefeated Aussie. I am excited, yes, off the back of one of the great fights. He steps back into the ring against Devin Haney. Welcome, George Kambosis. Lovely to have you. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. The hundreds of belts that you already have sticking on the line, but you're getting one opportunity to get one more. Yeah, look, it's uh, a great moment. You know, this last piece is half a piece, I call it, because I have the super belt of this uh, sanctioning body. So this is the half piece that puts the final full stop, but what a story. It's a brief or, story. Already became undisputed in, in New York, but mm. they're trying to deny it. And now I get to do it back at home, put a full stop on it and uh, get to do it in front of my people. All right, I want you to show people in, in a second the bling you're wearing, which I think is fantastic. But I was just thinking about this as we're coming, to, uh, the camera was on, that you would get you know, people coming wanting selfies with you all the time, yeah. boxes. Do. Does everybody get a selfie stick their hand in a, into a fist? <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. 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 yeah, pretty much. <laughs> some, some don't know what they're doing, <laughs> but they still put their hands up. What? And you know what the craziest ones? When you get like uh, 80, 90 year old grandmother, <laughs> Still puts her hand up. It's incredible. I'm a to myself. Really she must have been a fighter. <laughs> Show us that because that is that is stunning. Which yeah. camera in there can pick it up? That Championship just ring. The, oh. So that t tells a little bit of the story. Yeah. Look, it was uh, a gift from a great jeweller here in Sydney. They were so uh, supportive of what I had achieved and so proud. And they said, "Can you come to the shop? We've got a present for you." And, there it is, championship ring, all the belts on the side. So, you know, it's a great moment, uh, momentum for me, and um, you know, it's uh, brilliant. Something that I can show the world. George, you've been training so hard. Like you said, leave no stone unturned. Do you think you're a better fighter seven months on from your fight from Loaf Pez? 100%. As a champion, you get better when you win your first world title. But I collected five in one night. So I'm that much better. I feel like I'm in my prime right now and I can't wait to show it June 5th. And how much has that fight and that win changed your life? Life got busier, but I was able to keep my foundations of what got me there. The hard work, the, the training in the trenches, in the dark, that never changes. There is commitments, there is media work, but as a champion, you need to take that with, with everything that you have and uh, make uh, good time management, which I... How do, how do you sit now then, George, with on the back of listening to you then, when you first started out, you're the hunter, you're hunting mm. the championships, you know, you've got the belts now, now you're the hunted. So does that change your mindset in preparation for these fights? I'm still hunting because he's got that half piece too, so that mm. hunter mentality hasn't changed. Yeah. More than anything, it's pushed me more because now I have more to lose. Now he's trying to take everything I've worked hard for, but most of all, he's trying to show that he belongs at the top. Mm. Now I've got my kids to feed, I've got my family, I've got the, the country behind me. Australia, Greece, he's not going to come here and do that to me. No way. Love it. George, I really enjoyed Phil Rothfield's story about how you had to clean cars to fund yourself, you sold raffle tickets to fund overseas travel, and you've come through the school of hard knocks. Could you have won that fight if you'd had a soft life? Like, did, did, did that granite in you help you? I don't think so. I think um, with the hard road I've had, the adversity, washing cars to, to make a, a dollar, meet tra uh, raffles and getting whatever I can to be able to find myself to go into the amateur tournaments overseas. That gave me that extra drive, that built that character, but also built that confidence and self-belief because I knew how hard it was to get to the top and I did everything I could to get to the top. So when it did get hard in round 10, it wasn't enough just to lay down and say, this is enough. I've made everyone proud. They'll forgive me for, for not winning this fight. I needed to win that fight with everything I had. Take, take us into the day of, the day before. You, you know, some boxers are famous, you do the weigh-in, then you go and eat 16 kilos of pasta to try and top it up. What, what's it like the few hours before and then after the weigh-in through to the fight? Do you have a routine, a superstition? How does it go? I'm pinpoint with everything. So straight after the weigh-in, my hydration, the right meals, the right food that's going to give me great energy throughout the whole moment till I step inside the ring. So everything is done properly and I'm just relaxed, cool, calm, collected. I know that I've put in the hard work. I know there's no one bit of thought in my head saying that you didn't prepare properly. I'm going in the, in the, into the ring to fight and be ready for whatever. 
comes to that fight. In terms of being ready, it's those very small percentages of what I like. Because I, I, I don't want to get personal, but let's talk about sex. Uh, <laughs> you have... You're not having sex in the lead-up. You've said that and you've done that before in the fight. But what I liked about it is you said that's just a 0.1% of an advantage, mm. but it's those things that can change the result. Well, I've got three kids already, so it's probably going to be a favour. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, so I make sure that everything is pinpoint. Mm. And it's, it is the 0.1% that becomes champion of the world that gets this opportunity to defend in front of all these people in Australia at a mega stadium fight. This was never given to me. No one gave me nothing. I had to earn it the hard way, come from the trenches, come from the local ground, but I wouldn't want any other way. And if it means I've got to sacrifice a little bit extra right now, so be it. George, you, what drives you? What motivates you? Legacy. Legacy is what drives me. My country drives me, but my kids as well. My family, my motivation comes from them and showing that with hard work, dedication, discipline, that anything can be achieved. And I'm the perfect role model, not only for my kids, but for all the kids in Australia and in the world. George, I'm all fascinated. When, when you're in the zone in the ring, right, it's, and, it's, and it's 1v1, when your corner's yelling at you, can you actually hear what they're, what they're saying to you? Or are you in a zone that you're just focused on what, what's going on? Because a lot of feedback is coming your way, but do you actually take any of it in? I've got a very good corner that yeah. we are so sharp with everything we do. So they're not going to be over dramatic. They're not going to be screaming as much as they can. But again, emotions do fly. So they yeah. do raise their voices here and there. You just need to stay focused, mm. continue working the game plan. And again, it's round by round. Every round you're in there, you don't look too far forward. You just keep getting through round by round till the fight is done. How do you unpick uh, Devin Haney? He's a young guy, but his technique is very good. Everything I bring to the table is better than what he does. Everything. Yes, he's a young guy, but TFMO Lopez was a young guy too. He's supposedly one of the four kings, so was Lopez. The emperor, <laughs> at home, <laughs> I will not be beaten. And do you ever get annoyed that Paul Gallagher and the prize fighters get, more, get a lot of publicity and they're fighting domestically, where you've got all the belts mm. and you've had to get less? Does that annoy you? Has it ever annoyed you? Uh, not anymore. Back in the day, yes, but now, equal fight his whole career and... It's not, not going to make what I'm making, so um, I wish him all the best. I wish everybody all the best, you know, rugby league player, boxer, you know, that gets in the ring. It takes a lot of uh, guts and, you know, for me, I focus on myself, but there are so many y young, great talent in Australia, so many prospects that need to get a little bit more limelight and part of my Ferocious Promotions company is going to do that for them. Well, George, we wish you all the best. I love you got the Never Retreat, Never Surrender tattoo, which is the mm. spark cry, yes. which is brilliant. I've got Can't We Talk It Over. <laughs> <laughs> All the best. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's the biggest fight on Australia's shores this year. You can watch this man, George Cambosis Jr., fight Devin Haney for the undisputed lightweight title. Sunday, 5th of June from 11am uh, Eastern. Catch all the action live with main event on Foxtel.